This class is going to last a bit longer than most. We like to think that all our master classes touch on themes of importance, but occasionally we come up against something really important to all of us marketers, novices, veterans, students, teachers, all of us. This class really matters to our profession and to ourselves. We've touched on the topic of the four P's of the so-called marketing mix in past classes. We have identified place and price in the hierarchy of marketing tools as much lower than the tools of product and communication. We will come back to these issues in future classes, but as we now dig deeper into marketing effectiveness, it is already time for us to start to put price and place where they belong, in the far corner of the marketer's toolbox they deserve, and way down from the heights where they sit snarling and growling at us today. If we hone our communications effectiveness, we must start making choices. We must throw out what doesn't matter and concentrate on what does. What builds brand loyalty? We have argued that P for price and P for place are not equal in importance to P for product and P for promotion. They certainly do not sit above them, where well-paid marketing gurus locate these vampires. Goldman Sachs was described in Rolling Stone magazine as a great vampire squid wrapped around the face of humanity, relentlessly jamming its blood funnel into anything that smells like money. Goldman Sachs has nothing on P for price and P for place in their importance so overblown by the purveyors of perceived wisdom in 20th and 21st century academia. So let's take the opportunity on our journey to effective communication to revisit the infamous 4Ps model of the so-called marketing mix. The great distractor, the foul-smelling red herring, the snake oil cure-all peddled for 65 years by unworldly academics in their dusty classrooms. A useless checklist pretending to guide people who know little of effective marketing devised by people who know nothing. A grab bag of temptations for practitioners to postpone painful decisions, a postponement which is the dream of bureaucrats and committee men, but the nightmare of purposeful businessmen. And not incidentally a misconception which provides the most cogent reason why investors and other finance people mistrust and despise us marketers in equal measure. You may have guessed by now that we personally are not fans of the four Ps in general, even less of their offspring, the thousand and one inflationary Ps of the last 60 years. But most of all, we hate the ubiquitous peddling of price and place as first stop on the marketing journey. We hate the obsession with price and place forced on consumer goods marketers by an overweening retail trade led by the great supermarket chains. We hate the predominance of price and place and their ability to suck life and profit out of a brand as it is weakened beyond redemption by interminable discounts. An obsession with price and place kills brands. Marketing is all about brands, so price and place kill marketing, which kills business, and that really matters to every one of us and our future descendants. So, to move on from our timely rant, remember there are only two P's that count. We've said it before, and now we say it again with gusto. And now it really matters. When we put a copy strategy to work, we don't have the luxury of loading elements into our message. Our message has only one clear objective, to coax customers into loyalty. Remember the elements of a good and effective copy strategy? Clarity, brevity, competitiveness, focus. Now how can you have focus, how can you have brevity with four P's in your message? How can you have focus and brevity if your message has an ounce of product, a pound of place, a kilo of price, and a gram of promotion? With all this stuff floating around, how can you coax any customer, who has at best a few seconds of their attention to give you, into the loyalty you seek? Well, you can't. You must keep the P's that matter, and you must throw out the rest. You must prioritize. There are only two P's that create brand loyalty. Product and P for communication. The product and the message content we are tuning to maximum effectiveness as we work with copy strategies. You must have P for product in your message. It is a product you are selling. It is the product of which the face is your brand to which your customer will become loyal. It is the product which enables you to be overtly competitive. Product there must be. Promotion is there by definition. Promotion is communication. Promoting the brand is what you are doing. The message is the persuasion portion of communication. But price has no place 
place in a copy strategy and nor does place. They must go. Our goal is loyalty. The price of a brand does not foment loyalty. Indeed, a loyal customer will tolerate higher prices than a disloyal customer. Price, we will see, can secure trial and retrial of a product and a brand, but not loyalty. Habit, perhaps, but not loyalty. Loyalty runs deep and requires coaxing, persuading, convincing. Place does not foment loyalty. It facilitates purchase for sure, and without extended purchase, there cannot be loyalty. But loyalty comes from exposure to the product in use, plus persuasion and conviction in a communication message. So every message must persuade. Every message must strive to convince and coax into loyalty. That's why we have a copy strategy, to make sure that every message persuades. So, time to get bloodthirsty. Time to meet out a bloody end for a pair of perennial bloodsuckers. Time to stick a stake in the heart of the vampire's price and place. How does that work as we grope our way to message effectiveness? Find out in our more gentle next class. Please come and join us as we continue to work with copy strategies.